Hey, what's going on the Whiskey Cove and welcome back to another Whiskey Store Haul coming your way. Run the video. Alrighty then folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. This is a whiskey store haul video for the whiskies that I managed to pick up in the last month or so. And again, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing to the channel as we help build this community and help the channel as best we can. So with that being said, let's look at some of the whiskey bottles that I was able to kill off here. So it wasn't really much of a busy month for me. I didn't have many too, too many people around, it's been pretty busy. But I did manage to kill off a few bottles here. First bottle is Makers 46. I managed to buy this bottle on sale a few years ago. And then I cracked it a couple of months ago. It didn't smell great. I don't know if it was a bad bottle or a bad barrel for whatever reason. But it wasn't good. If you've tried Makers 46 or then you've liked it, please comment down below. Because for whatever reason, this tasted a little bit sour and it was just a little bit off. Which is a bit strange because I've drunk a lot of Makers and I've never had that note before. And like I said, I had it on sale so I wasn't too concerned about it. I think I paid like really cheap price for it. So... No qualms. I won't be replacing it because I have a bunch of makers here that I need to get through. Next ball up is going to be Rebel Cast Strength Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is a store pick by uh, or a single barrel store pick by a local whiskey group here in Denver by 5280 Whiskey. It's good whiskey, but it's just kind of run of the mill every day. It's a little bit too young for me. It is like a four year cast strength bourbon. It's just a pretty generic cast strength bourbon. I have the distiller selection, which is a little bit lower ABV. And I also have the Ezra Brooks cast strength from the same type of pick they did at the same time. So I'm hoping that's going to be a bit better. I'm not going to be uh, finding, or I'm not going to be trying to purchase any more of these. It just wasn't up my street. Lux Row typically isn't my flavor profile. So that was the Rebel Cast Strength pick. And then next up is going to be a Pendarian Myth Welsh Whiskey. Beautiful bottle. Really happy with this bottle. A little bit of smoked sultana, stone fruit. A little bit of like caramel apple there coming from the Buffalo Trace bourbon barrels or Evan William Burrow barrel finishing. I'm not going to replace this bottle. I paid about $55 for it. I have a bunch of Pendarian back there, which is all great by Fantastic, by the way. So I'm not going to be replacing that. Sad to see this go, but again, plenty left to get involved in and pen down and stuff. With that being said, let's get into the balls I managed to pick up this last month. So you might have seen me pick one of these up in the old store hall, but we went back there guys and we picked up two Evan, Will uh, Evan Williams, we picked up two early times bottled in bond. This is the black plastic cap. So it's kind of like the original OG ones here. Paid retail for them. I paid like $23.99 for a one liter bottle of Ever William Bottled and Bond. So great value for money there. I probably have about four or five of these. I know that they're quite sought after. So either I'll drink them and really enjoy them, making my daily drinker for a while. Or maybe I'll trade them away and see if I what I can get back in return for these guys. But that was the early times Bottled and Bond. I got two of those. Next up, we have Woodford Reserve Double Yoked. And that is a store pick of this as well. So why I bought this was I'm trying to do a toasted barrel finished bourbon blind. So I really needed to pick up this Makers because I think it's one of the better ones out there. So I'm, it's going to be this one. It's going to be Elijah Creek Toasted. It's going to be the Old Forester 1910. And it's also going to be a Mictus Toasted Barrel that I also have. So we're going to be doing a blind video probably coming up within the next month or so. Keep your eyes open for that. This is a store pick as well. So... Well, this says a store pick. It says personally selected, but it doesn't say anything about a single barrel. So uh, I know that they never really say anything about a single barrel on these. So it'll be interesting to see how that stacks up against the rest. I paid a little over MSRP for that. I paid about $5 over MSRP, about 65 bucks. But I had some store points to use, so I used those points and I ended up paying like only like $30 for that. So pretty happy with that result. And then we also have um, an Irish whiskey here. This is Gold Spot, uh, limited edition, nine year release. I think much like the Irish Blue Spot, it says age seven years on the Blue Spot, but there's old distillate kind of blended in there. I think that's the same case for the uh, Gold Spot. It says this is brought to celebrate the 135th anniversary. Seems a pretty unique anniversary to bring out something like a gold spot, but nevertheless, I'm happy that it's come out. I paid $135, which I think is right around MSRP for that. This is a 700 silliliter bottle, so it is one of those smaller ones that we're starting to see everywhere. So I lose the point for that. But that was Irish Gold Spot. 
Coming up, and this is a whiskey you might have seen and whiskeys to look out for video, and this is the Maker's Mark 2022 Limited Release. This is the BRT-02. I'm still looking for the BRT-01, because again, much like the toasted barrel finish, double or the double oaked from uh, Woodford, I'm trying to do a blind with all the limited releases from Maker's Mark. I have all of them so far, apart from the BRT-01. So I'm hoping that's gonna come out here shortly, or it's probably already out. I just need to go out and find it. I paid $65, I think, for this, so right around MSRP. This is coming in at 54.7% alcohol. Uh, the stave details are 10 virgin toasted French oak staves. Tasting notes, dark expression, filled with notes of fruit, nut, and chocolate. Super excited to get into that maker's mark right there. Uh, and then next up, we have a local distiller here in Colorado called Copper Sky. I believe this is probably their, their uh, sourced MGP juice. However, this is different because they finish it in a Russell's barrel. So it's a Russell barrel finished rye. It is a six year rye as well. Like I said, I believe that it's from MGP. So you're gonna have a lot of that MGP flavor profile here with that. And then it's gonna be interesting to see what flavors it takes on from that Russell's barrel as well. This is coming in at 60.7% alcohol and I paid $73.99 for this. Kind of right in line with a lot of craft distillery prices. Like if you think of the Castle and Key, I think that was about $60. And then the Hidden Barn is about $75. So right in line with that. But I actually think this juice is fantastic and I can't get, wait to get into this expression. I have about eight other Copper Sky finishes and they've all been great thus far. So that was the Copper Sky Russell's Barrel finished. So I have two bottles left. I haven't been able to get uh, one of these bottles before. But the first one I managed to pick up was Elma T. Lee. So it's been quite a while since I've been able to get one of these. So I'm super happy that I was able to get this bottle of whiskey. Super humbled and blessed that I was also able to pay MSRP for that. I'm lucky that I'm part of like some whiskey clubs and then, you know, sometimes there's the availability to buy something special if I can get up to the store in time or, or if I, I, I'm eligible to get it at that time. Again, I paid MSRP for this, so I think that was around $45 to $50, which is a great value for money. Last time I had one of these Alma Tealies, it was pretty solid, but this is a single barrel product, so again, they're gonna have some variations between that. So that was Elma T. Lee. So last, this last bottle on the list, I've never been able to get a hold of this bottle. I put my name into some raffles specifically to get one of these bottles, but I've never been able to get it. So with Mictas, I've never gotten one of their limited releases before. I've tried all of their base products, which are all great whiskey, but I've never been able to try any of the limited ones, not even in a bar, I haven't bought one. And maybe I should have by now. However, the bottle I managed to pick up I managed to, I hear someone posted that they saw one at a store and they had a couple there. So I raced over and I managed to get the last one that they had. So super humble and thankful that someone posted that information on Facebook. And that's a really good tip for anybody trying to find good whiskey out there. Is join as many local Facebook bourbon or whiskey groups as you can because people are very kind. They like to post that sort of stuff. And I feel like I like to do that too. I also like to post that stuff. And if you are in Colorado or surrounding states, there's a whiskey group called Rocky Mountain Whiskey that you should uh, join. And that is another one of those groups that will post stuff if they see a lot of people see it on the shelves. They will share that information as well on there. And also you will be able to see like plenty of photos people are taking while drinking. And it's just a good community to be a part of. So this is Mictas. This is their single barrel 10 year rye. So I don't think I've ever tried a rye that's 10 years or older. I can't even think of one off the top of my head. I know that the Pappy Van Winkle Family Reserve rye is 13 years old, but I'm just trying to think, and let me if I can see here, because the uh, High Wests is about, only about six, seven years old. Same with the Sagamo Spirits. I think you have maybe like an eight year one of that. But apart from that, I don't, I don't, you know, you generally don't see rye like get up there in age, like the Willet purple tops you'll see get up there, like they have like those, the ones I have back here. But then the green tops are only four years old, the Willet green tops, and they're great juice. And if you can find them for like 50, $55, that's some of the better value that there is in rye. However, I've never tried this Mictus before. I've never tried any of the limited edition ones, like I've already said. So I'm super excited to get into this one. And if anybody knows of kind of any rye whiskey that is quite high in age, which generally sits on shelves, not 
including Whistlepig, because no one likes Whistlepig, then let us down, know down below in the comments, and I'm gonna see if I can pick up one of those balls and kind of, you know, compare it to this. I know there's one ball is like maybe a like Kentucky Owl, but I think they get a little bit high in price. So and that all we have, or that's all we have for today's video, folks. I hope you enjoy the content, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time. Cheers.